Welcome to Miracles Now. I am Dion Smith. Oh, what a season that just ended where we recognized that our Lord Jesus Christ died, was buried, and resurrected so that you and I can be redeemed. Jesus bore his cross so that we can be redeemed. You and I, brothers and sisters, have a cross to bear. But I let you listen to the man of God, Bishop McLean, as he explained about the cross as a symbol of suffering and deliverance. And I'll see you in a little bit. I want to talk to you on the topic, the cross, a symbol of suffering and deliverance. The cross, a symbol of suffering and deliverance. Now, this cross of which we speak, it represents the death of Jesus Christ and is a central part of the gospel message. Simply meaning, without the cross, there would be no gospel. Without the cross, there would be no Christ. Without the cross, there would be no salvation. You and I could never be saved if it weren't for the old rugged cross. Somebody give God praise for the cross. It represents our suffering, not just Christ suffering for us, but also our suffering for him. Because to be saved and to surrender to the Lordship of Jesus Christ requires that you go through something because you have surrendered to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. It means that Christians have to suffer for the cause of Christ. And many of you know that once you say yes to Jesus, there are many persons who began ridiculing you and they began putting you down. And it is as if your warfare intensified and increased when you said yes to the Lord. It's as if, if you had little trouble before Christianity, you have big trouble after Christianity. And that's not what we bargain for because many persons told us a lie they told us that if you come to jesus christ everything was going to be all right <laughs> somebody tell your neighbor they lied to you don't believe it they lied to you the cross was a despised method of punishment despised method of punishment so christians are treated with disrespect for their stand in today's world because if you name the name of Jesus Christ there are things that you can't be neutral on you can't be on the borderline on and then people are going to begin to see you a particular way because of the stance that you are taking but it doesn't matter what the world thinks you have to stand for something or you will fall for everything somebody say amen a crossless Christianity a crossless Christianity is a Christianity that is void of Christ, which is no Christianity at all. Say amen if you're with me. In Luke chapter 9 and verse 23, the Bible states that if any man should come unto me, the first thing that he would need to do is what? Deny himself. And then he needs to what? Take up his what? Cross and follow me why are you taking up your cross you are taking up your cross so that it can constantly remind you of the journey that you're on you take up your cross so that you can remember that the flesh must be crucified to the cross you take up your cross so that you can remember that in that cross it represents what jesus christ did for you and if Jesus Christ did it, he was also paving a way and setting an example for you and for me. There are three perspectives that we could get from looking at the cross. And the first is the historical perspective. Historical perspective. If you read uh, secular history, you will observe... That Pilate recognized this crucifixion. You'll observe that Caesar recognized his crucifixion. You'll observe that the politicians of his day, they also recognized his crucifixion. But to recognize it solely as history, 
they'll help you. We know he died. We know he was crucified. But every time we eat at the Lord's table, he says, you are showing my death until I come. You are showing what I did for you. You are doing this in remembrance of me. Somebody lift your hand and say amen if you're with me. You're remembering the fact that I laid my life down. I died that you can live. I came that you would have life and have this life more abundantly. It is not enough to know. But your belief in what he has done should lead to salvation. And should lead to you walking in a newness of life. Somebody lift your hand and praise Jesus Christ. Somebody open your mouth and call upon this Jesus that died for your sins. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that it, it has historical relevance. The cross is relevant to me. It's important to me. Without the cross, I am nothing. I'm a pig dressed up in a bow tie. And if you let me go, I'm going back to the mud. But this cross of which I speak transforms me. Not the same person I used to be. My faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ changes my life. Because my blood is messy. There's sin in my blood. My child has my DNA and give that child a little time nobody has to teach this child with my sinful DNA how to steal the milk out of the fridge or how to say no daddy I didn't do it come on they tell lie and they steal without anybody teaching them because sin is in us and unless the blood of Jesus Christ touch us I'm here to tell you that then it has personal connectivity We can all identify with a cross. There are a whole lot of people inside here with crosses. Are you listening to me? We have walked in here with some kind of a cross. Say amen if you're with me. Say amen one more time. For some of you, this cross, this thing that is paining you, this thing that is hurting you, it could be a job. For some of you, your cross is your job. That, that thing that causes suffering is your job you need to work to earn a living but my god you have some people that on the job the way you have to deal with it for some of you your cross is your financial situation that you have been trying to sort out how long and it seems as if this situation is just too much to bear. Is anybody with me? For some of you, the, 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 the situation of suffering that you are dealing with and the sac I mean, you, if, if it weren't for Christ, you would have taken any other job. And you would have done some stuff on that job. That I've given you more money. But because you said Christ, you can do it. Anybody here? For some of you, your cross could be singleness. Because by this time, you think that you're married. And lonely just won't leave you. And yes, you could have got take up. You could take a 
up anybody. But because of Christ. Anybody getting my message? Anybody, anybody understand my message? Because of Christ, you say no. Him look good, him smell good. But no. For some of you, your cross is sitting beside you. Because married people, some of them married to their cross. No, 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 no. Look straight. Look straight. Don't. You go home every day to lie down beside your everybody else praise you everybody else applaud you everyone else celebrate you apart from the cross that you're married to I did not say crosses I said cross But you made a vow and you want to be true to God. And you hold on and you're suffering and you endure some stuff. Am I talking to anybody in the day? For some of you, your cross is not necessarily in the bed beside you. It is in the room next to your room. That rebellious child... One lady said to me the other day, when them little, them tangle up your foot, when them big, then tangle up your heart. That child that's on drugs, that child that you see going down the wrong road and you're trying to, to pull them back and they're not listening. That child that is entering into a relationship that you know will be detrimental to their success. That child that you know have the potential to do so much better but is wasting time and hanging around the wrong people. That child, am I talking to anybody? That child... Some of you is not necessarily is that it, 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 not necessarily the child is it's, it's the parent. <laughs> yes, for some of your parents come like your cross. <laughs> Tell the neighbor, not your parent, not in that. <laughs> for some teenager will go home to an abusive parent today. Some of you are dealing with a situation with your parent that you can't even share with others. Is anybody here? For some of you, your cross is a friendship. Cuts you. Pains your heart. Betr nothing cut like betrayal. Nothing hurts like backstabbers. So somebody tell your neighbor, I hope you are not the one. We have some people in our we have people in our lives we love them but honestly them hurt us deeply and no one can hurt you as deep as a friend uh, <laughs> Jesus have mercy is what kind of preaching this today here Judas dipped his bread into Jesus's gravy and leave right from the table with urgency and sell him out. Mm. Anybody getting this message? 
For some of you, your cross is that situation that you're dealing with that affects your equilibrium. You can't find your balance. What you knew to be okay, you wonder now. What you had confidence in. You no longer have confidence in because you it's like sit you everything is out of control am i talking to anybody how do we deal with the various challenges that will come in our lives as children of god as people who have not been saved how will you deal with challenges how will you deal with the cross? Because you've got to understand huh, that there is an end to the process. And the process is not an end. In itself. If you're with me, say amen. amen. Matthew chapter 26 tells us watch and pray that he enter not into temptation because what the spirit indeed is willing but the flesh is weak if you and i are going to overcome if you and i are going to endure if you and i are going to have the strength to deal with the different crosses that we will deal with in life Number one, you're going to have to have a relationship with the one who you are trying to pray to. Because he says the way you're going to deal with this is by prayer. He says pray that when the cross comes, when the challenge comes, when the situation comes, you don't succumb to the temptation. Because with every cross that comes your way, there is always something that presents itself for you to displease God and operate in your flesh and rebel against the word of God and to turn your back on God and to curse him. When the cross faced Peter, he said, I don't know the man he backslid. Many people will backslide when dealing with their cross. But Jesus said in Matthew chapter 26 and verse 41, watch and pray. Cross is going to come. Challenges will come. But those who have a strong prior life, it doesn't matter what comes your way, you will not enter into the temptation. Somebody hold your neighbor's hand and cry out to God. So what is going to keep you from falling? What is going to keep you from falling is your connection to your father. Jesus Christ in 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 uh, in in Luke chapter 22 as he spoke to them and as he cried out to his father he said if you don't pray you're going to enter into temptation and then he went into the garden of Gethsemane and he prayed and he cried and he travailed let me tell you something Jesus overcame his cross in the garden of Gethsemane your prior life is what is going to cause you to overcome every challenge and every struggle because you cannot do it by yourself but I can can do all things through Christ who somebody lift up a praise unto God somebody lift up a praise unto God I am here to announce to you that you want a crown and I know it but you cannot get a crown without a cross I know you want victory but you cannot get victory without a battle I know you want to triumph but you cannot triumph unless you learn to fight in the valley of the shadow of death somebody better lift up a praise if you're with me I know Nothing, nothing of worth comes easy. Anything that means something going to cost you everything. 
Jesus have mercy. I, 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 honorable Shatakai. Somebody tell your neighbor I'm going high. Somebody tell your neighbor I'm going far. Somebody tell your neighbor I want to go deep in God. If you want to go deep in God, he's going to give you a situation that is going to test your feet. And Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody say it one more time. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you have to learn to pull on Jesus. You have got to learn to pray when you don't feel like praying. You have got to learn to fast when you don't feel like fasting. You have got to learn not to do what comes natural. Because what came natural to Jesus was, Father, let this cup pass from me. But he said, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. He could have called 10,000 angels. But he said, no, I've got to go on the way of the cross because I need to be glorified and I can't be glorified without the cross somebody lift your hand and praise God for the cross I'm almost done now there are few things that Jesus Christ did that you and I must do as we deal with whatever challenge and whatever cross comes our way. Number one, we need to know what the Father's will is. Christians who think that Christianity is about smooth sailing and everything is just nice and glovey and groovy. Christians who believe that get frustrated under pressure. Over 15, 17 years ago, when God told me I'm calling you, but boy, you are going to suffer. He told me straight up. He said, you are going to suffer. And he showed me Genesis chapter 12 and 13. And he showed me how he called Abraham and how Abraham suffered. As soon as Abraham stepped out to obey God, there was a famine. But he also told me, if you learn how to deal with the famine, you will see my power in your life. He also told me, if you learn how to deal with the season. I will do for you what no man can. You have got to know what the will of God is. Bad things sometimes happen to good people. God called a meeting about Job and didn't invite Job. He will have meetings behind your back. Didn't involve Job one bit. Didn't tell Job that this is why you're going through. Listen to me. He's the sovereign monarchy. He's the sovereign king. And he owes us no explanation. What you need to understand is God's word. And my life must bring him glory. Come on, somebody say amen. It doesn't matter what happens to me in life. I know in whom I believe. And nothing is going to get me to shift. Nothing is going to get me to move. Woman of God, me now backslide. Me now backslide. Me now divorce him. Me now run, gone away, left him. It no matter how bad it gets, me now gone away. The word of faith movement said that Job was wrong to say, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. But mighty God, when you're going through situations, you need to find a way to cope with it. Or else you lose your mind. Job said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. The Lord give it, the Lord take it, but blessed. Somebody help me praise him. You have got to know that you will go through. You have got to know about that ego moshaka to robo sakata. You have got to know about the making of a warrior. You have got to know about the making of a leader. You have got to know that in order for him to make you, sometimes he has to break you. You have got to know that your stubborn will must break. You 
I've got to know the price. I said I need 10 people to help me praise him. Somebody open your mouth and help me praise him. Somebody help me praise him. Somebody open up your mouth and lift up the name of Jesus. Yes, 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 I feel a praise in my belly. I feel a praise in my spirit. I feel a praise. Whatever your cross is, you have to realize that as Christ did it, you can do it too. Remember what he said. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. As Christians, the cross means so much to us. It's our deliverance, it's a symbol of our suffering, but we know that we will come out victorious because Christ rose the game. Whatever you are going through, don't be disheartened. Trust God. Trust God. He did it with Jesus and he will do it for you. Let us pray that God strengthen us as we go through our season at this time. Father, we bless you. We give you honor and we give you glory. We thank you that we are a part of the family of Christ. We thank you that we are able, oh Father God, to partake in the Passover promises that God has given unto us. We thank you, mighty God, that through the blood of Jesus Christ, we are redeemed. Through his resurrection, Lord, we have life. And whatever cross we have to bear, we know, God, that we can overcome because you have given us the victory. Jesus bore it on his back. Jesus went down into hell and he took back authority from the enemy so that we as his children will not need to suffer endlessly. Lord, we give you glory for the brother, the sister who is going through now and is going through with a praise. We thank you, God, that they have not lost their praise, but they are continuing to worship. They are continuing to press into you. They are continuing to trust you, God, because your people, when they trust you, they shall never be put to shame. We give you honor, Lord, for your resurrection. We give you honor for the cross, Lord Jesus, and what it means to us. You died that we might have life and have it more abundantly. You took our sickness to the cross. You took our diseases to the cross. You took our poverty to the cross, mighty God. And today we rejoice in that fact. We give you glory, and we will never doubt that you will do it for us, even as you did it for the prophets of old. Whatever you are going through, remember, bear your cross because Jesus bore his and he came out on top. You are no less than he is. You will be victorious because he is our master. Thank you for joining us. And until next time, this is Miracles Now. Miracles Now has been brought to you by the kind sponsorship of Rima Medical Center, Shop 6, Dermason Plaza, Independent City, Port Moore, St. Catherine. Telephone 998-4666, 799-9253.